Will the US government support Ripple in court? Will the SEC be able to resist Ripple's argument? How much will the XRP court field cost? We will answer these questions in today's video. The US Securities and Exchange Commission SEC Lawsuit against Ripple Labs is not the only battle the company is currently fighting. In fact, there is a court case that has been under trial for a longer period of time. The class action lawsuit filed by XRP investors against Ripple Labs and CEO Brad Garlinghouse, which has been pending since November 2018. The case, which is being heard in the U.S. state of California, is led by lead plaintiff Bradley Sostak, with three lawsuits, Zakinov, O'Connor, and Greenwald. Consolidated into one, the plaintiffs accuse Ripple of selling excerpts an unregistered security and seek damages for losses suffered from the sale and alleged promises by Ripple. In addition, the plaintiffs are asking the court to also classify XRP as a security. Attorney John E. Deaton, who is already involved with a respective amicus brief in the Ripple V's, SEC and Elbri V's, Sexy and Elbri V's SEC cases is now getting involved in this case as well. As prominent criminal defense attorney James Filan writes in a series of tweets, Deaton is filing an amicus brief in Zakhanov v's Ripple. Filan writes that the proposed class would include extra holders around the world, including the 75,890 holders in the SEC case who have joined Ripple's arguments and disagree with the plaintiffs in Zakhanov, saying that SERP is not a security, is not a security. Moreover, the proposed class action is not limited to direct sales by Ripple, but extends to all sales of XRP, including secondary sales and international sales in countries where the token has already been classified as not a security. Deaton argues in his motion that the court should not certify the class because of these conflicts and because there are only a small number of holders who claim that RSRP is an unregistered security, while vastly more token holders worldwide claim that it is not just added to our document library? Order granting E. John Deaton known admission pro Hake, vice representing XR folders in U.S. District Court for Northern District of K in an re-Ripple Labs ins litigation. Link to order. Fred Rispoli, also an attorney from the community, commented on Deaton's move with applause, saying, being familiar with class actions, the class certification battle is the most important fight in these types of cases. John coming in here in this capacity is a real kick and the ball's top. Plaintiff's counsel. And I don't disagree with John, but the ball kick cannot be overstated. For his part, Deaton commented on Filan's announcement on Twitter, saying, whether it's the SEC or a plaintiff's attorney making the absurd argument that secondary market transactions of a token are also securities, simply big, it may have been previously offered or sold in a way that violated Section 5 of the Securities Act, I'll see you in court. Ripple's general counsel Stuart Alderodi has reacted to a recent Bloomberg article titled, Fight to Regulate Crypto at Crossroads as Ripple Ruling Looms. The article, published yesterday explains how an upcoming Ripple v. SEC lawsuit ruling will determine which federal agency between the SEC and CFICU should regulate the industry. Bloomberg, in reference to the lawsuit between the SEC and RIPA, said, an upcoming ruling in New York federal court could help determine the answer, along with the fates of numerous crypto investors and companies. The case hinges on whether a prominent digital token should be treated as a security, which would fall under the Securities Exchange Commission jurisdiction. The leading media outlet cited comments from former SEC's legal representatives, with the majority saying that the implosion of cryptocurrency exchange facts will determine the outcome of the Ripple lawsuit. Reacting to the article, Alderodi said irrespective of how Bloomberg dissects the lawsuit, the experts all agree that the outcome of the case will affect the future of cryptocurrencies in the United States. No matter how you dissect it, the experts agree. The outcome of the Ripple case will likely have a significant impact on crypto's future in the USE, he said. The ongoing Ripple case has captured much attention from the XRP community and other cryptocurrency investors, thus suggesting the significance of the lawsuit in the US crypto industry. There is an ongoing debate over who should regulate the cryptocurrency industry. With top industry players like Ripple's CEO Brad Garlinghouse back in the sea of TE to emerge as the appropriate regulator for crypto, the SEC, under the leadership of Gary Gensler, 
is trying to position itself as the cop on the beat for the emerging market. Carol Goforth, a professor at the University of Arkansas School of Law specializing in fintech regulation, said in the Bloomberg piece that should the SEC win the lawsuit, the regulator would claim jurisdiction over most crypto assets. However, a win for a ripple could reduce the SEC's claim over becoming the regulatory watchdog for crypto. It bears mentioning that the SEC has faced criticism from crypto stakeholders over its regulatory approach in the crypto sector. Industry players, including Alderodi, have accused the SEC of preferring enforcement instead of clarifying rules. Aside from crypto enthusiasts, Arthur Jacoby, a former SEC attorney, has slammed the SEC for its regulatory approach in the crypto space. Instead of engaging in transparent and public rulemaking with industry comments, the SEC has chosen to mark its digital asset territory via the federal court system, Jacoby noted. In response to this criticism, Gensler has maintained that existing financial market rules are clear. Meanwhile, a decision in the Ripple v. SEC lawsuit is expected to be given in the first half of the year, as both the SEC and Ripple are asking Judge Annalisa Torres to rule in their favor. Publicity, hungry Twitter lawyer John Deaton recently boasted about getting the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, SECI, to declare on record that Elbree's LBC token is not a security. Many saw this as a hint that the big bad SEC had been put in its place for overreaching and that Ripple, another business fighting the U.S., regulator over an alleged unlawful securities offering, may win. Deaton exaggerates, an excerpt in any future crypto product will be unaffected. The SEC defeated Elbree Elbree months ago. A U.S. federal court concluded that Elbree's LBC token sale was an unregistered securities offering and unlawful. The SEC never called LBC a security. As Deaton notes, Howey cases are about whether the item was offered as an investment contract, not whether it was a security. Investment contracts are securities. Elbry and Ripple are set cases. Given that LBC's original sale was unlawful, may bag holders resell tokens on the secondary market. The SEC's proposed phrasing might ban Elbry's direct and secondary sales. The SEC seems unwilling to agree that any secondary market sale would not violate securities laws in court argument. Deaton entered. Naomi Rockwell, a crypto journalist, possesses 261,500 LBC tokens from the secondary market. No Albury tokens were bought. As an amicus curia, she asked the court if its LBC token ruling would restrict secondary market sales. Deaton represented her. If not, reject the sex wording. Deaton represented Rockwell in a remedies hearing last week. On his own program, Deaton pointed the judge to the widely distributed Lewis Cohen article, which examined seven decades of securities case law and concluded that the asset underlying an investment contract has never been considered a security. Thus, any SEC order should not prevent El Baishi holders from selling tokens on the secondary market. Deaton claims he won many industry wins here. That's exaggerating. The sexy would have acknowledged that the pure situation of a wholly independent resale of tokens the first selling of which was unlawful, is not a securities offering. The sex never disagreed. Their legal documents confirm the sex has repeatedly said that the LBC token is not a security. Therefore, Deaton's on-record claim is meaningless. The sex's hesitation to declare that no secondary sale constitutes a securities offering is justified. The Elbree case has always been about LBC token sales by Elbree not secondary sale. The sexy may have submitted an unclear order, but as its documents show, it never intended to make any assertions regarding secondary sales as legality. The court asked the SEC about a simple transfer from one party to another, which the SEC properly recognized would not be a securities offering. However, this does not indicate that no secondary sale could ever be a securities offering, as Deaton claimed. Secondary sales may violate securities laws. Transaction type matters. The judgment does not affect the fact that Elbra's first offering was an unregistered securities transaction. That's why XRP is under fire, and the Elbra lawsuit won't impact Ripple's liabilities for its first XRP sale. Ripple officials pledged to develop secondary markets to boost the coin's price. 
which the SEC claims triggers the Howey test's expectation of profits depending on the actions of others' prompt. 